Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Fundamental Facts presentation, Jesus discusses how principles of law that are an expression of God's personality, character, attributes, nature, and desires govern God's laws and presents some fundamental facts about God, God's principles, and God's laws. Recorded on the 19th of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, well, I think everybody is here already. Is that not true, Davies? Yep, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, so I might as well get started rather than hanging around. What do you think? Okay. Gives me two more minutes to discuss fundamental facts with you. <laughs> you beauty. Every minute counts now, Daz. It's like, uh, particularly when you've got seven subjects to discuss. So, so what I'd like to do, this, uh, this discussion is fundamental facts. So what is it about? Fundamental facts about understanding God's loving laws, actually, is what the full topic would be, wouldn't it? So here we want to face some fundamental facts in four primary areas. So the four primary areas are some fundamental facts about God, things that you may not have considered about God even this whole time that you've been listening to Divine Truth being presented, and fundamental facts about God's universe, how the universe is actually structured and created. And we we start off in a very basic level there when we go and drill down into a lot more complicated levels later on in in the presentations. And, and in fact, some of you will need to make some additional notes if you want to, because down the track, because uh, none of the diagrams in the book actually are going to represent the diagrams I put on the board. And fundamental facts about God's principles. We talk about what that means, what, what it means to have that God has principles. And then we talk some fundamental facts about God's laws. So that's the basic structure our, of our talk this morning. Right, so the first thing we need to introduce to you is, is some concepts about God. So let's start with the concepts about God. God is an infinite entity who existed before the universe itself existed. So imagine for a moment this whiteboard is infinite, if you can imagine such thing, such a thing. So God would be then this whiteboard. So that begs the question then, if God is infinite, where do we exist? See, if God's taking up infinite space and God is infinite, then where do the finite things that God has created exist? Any ideas? Yep, if we come to Nina down here, thanks. Keep your hand up, Nina, because people don't know you. Um, We must be inside God. We must be inside God. That's correct. That's a bit of a shock for some of you, yes? Yes? Because before, when I drew diagrams, they were going like, here's God, here's you. Right? Is that not true? Uh, Why did I do that? Well, I had to illustrate it simply to you somehow. Right? But the reality is, this whiteboard is God. Right? And you exist inside of God, whether you're aware of it or not. And in fact, not only do you, but every single universe that gets created also exists inside of God. All matter exists inside of God. Absolutely everything exists inside of God. Because God is the infinite entity, nothing can get bigger than God or be outside of God. Huh? Catherine, thank you. And then back to Alex. Is that how the saying, we live and move and have our being in him, yes. came about? That's right. Yeah, it's a Bible saying, and that's how it came about. See, the, in the first century, the, the disciples who followed us around, if you could call them such, um, but by the way, the word disciple just means taught one. So I suppose you could say you are disciples in some regards, right? You're taught ones. Um, so in the first century... One of the things I taught was that God was an infinite being and we move, breathe and do everything inside of him. Does that make sense? So naturally it formed a part of some Bible verses sooner or later. 
Alex, thanks. Isn't the um, the new age thing then somehow true that like the projector's God and the curtain's God and well, that, everything's inside of God, but it doesn't mean that everything is God, and we'll talk about that concept later. Does that make sense? Mm. See, so th this is where because people are not feeling and the, and therefore and haven't received some of God's love, they don't understand the terminology, and so they then make suppositions, and so a lot of new age. Concepts are basically suppositions made by intellectual beings trying to understand the, that we exist within the infinite. And this is where many of you will also struggle until you receive more, more of God's love. Because until you receive more of God's love, you will not understand the concept of infinity really. And because the concept of infinity actually gets applied to every single attribute of God. Right, so concept of infinity is a very important concept. It's actually a principle that we haven't included in the 16 principles. Does that make sense? But it is a theme that you'll see carried through all the way through this particular presentation this week. It'll be that theme of infinite. So God is infinite. So that means that God, if God has personality and characteristics and attributes, let's draw them like a circle, like you've had it in your diagram. So here's a circle. God has personality. Let's say that it's God's personality. And let's say this outside of this, of course, the infinite being is God as the entity. So the entity, God, has personality. God's personality is infinite. So there's, there's all these things that you're never ever going to be able to discover about God's personality no matter how long you live, no matter how long you spend discovering it. There'll always be something new to discover about God's personality, characteristics, attributes and nature. But we're drawing it here like it's contained, but the reality is since God is infinite, so too God's personality, God's attributes, characteristics must all be infinite, infinite. Okay, so to understand this term of infinite, many of you would not have given that much thought in the past, I would suggest. Is that not true? And we need to give it a lot of thought, actually, because it, it demonstrates so many things about God's nature and also that principle of infinite, infinity is actually injected into every one of God's other principles. Right. So you could say there is an infinite amount of truth. There's an infinite amount of love that can come from God. There's an infinite amount of all of the other principles that we've got. Infinite amount of life, infinite amount of development, and so forth and so forth. Everything being contained within the entity of God herself. Yeah? Thanks. Would that mean that it doesn't matter how much we rebel, we can't get out? <laughs> That's correct. You can't get out of God. You can't get out of God. But, but you can see you can live in the illusion that you're out of God, which is how most of us actually live. Uh, so being in the sex sphere, denying God, that still would be an illusion. That's right, because yeah. they're still inside of God, aren't they? But they're denying God's existence, or they even think that they are God, for many of them. Okay. And, and that is not the truth. But, uh, but you could say it's a part, perhaps, of the truth in the sense that they, parts of their nature are in alignment with God. But the reality is you know, every, everything is within God, whether we believe it or not. Right? Now, some creations, though, the human makes, and those creations can be, as you'll find out later in our presentation, can be made without God's approval, and in fact, God can be... God actually has laws that begin destroying those creations as soon as you make them. Does that make sense? We'll talk about that later. So here we have this idea that God is an infinite entity. Very, very interesting idea, yes? Because it makes us rethink a lot of things when we think of that. Now, that means that if God has personality, then there's, involved in this personality is some, some attributes, if you like. So let's look at some of them. We know that love is an attribute of God, or that's what you've been taught. Whether you know that is going to be dependent on whether you've received some or not. But we could say love, um, sorry, God 
is love, couldn't we? In that God, being the infinite expression of love, obviously means that we could say God is love. But that doesn't mean that the attribute of love is God. So this is not true. So that's not true. That is true. Because love is not the only thing that God is. Love is just an attribute of God. So God is the perfection, the personification of love. But love itself is not the only attribute of God. So it's not actually accurate to say that love is God. It is only accurate to say God is love. Does that make sense to you? Because the love is, the act, is one of many... Attributes. Yeah, but how many? Infinite. infinite attributes. One of the many infinite attributes of God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we need to understand that. So we could say God is truth, could we not? Yes. But truth is not God. So the saying that truth is God is not false. Truth is an attribute, one of the many infinite attributes of God. Does that make sense? And so truth is an infinite attribute of God, but truth is not God herself, God himself, because God contains many more attributes, an infinite number of more attributes than truth. Now, it's very important that we actually understand that to a degree in terms of the concept of, of the reality of this concept. Because then we start to appreciate how God has actually designed the universe itself. Right? And we'll talk about how the there is a relationship between this infinity principle and everything that God does as a result of having, as a part of God, the infinity principle built in to God. Okay. So we need to understand these basic principles about God. Once we understand the basic principles about God, we can start to see some basic things that we need to... How, of how we go about moving and breathing inside of God. So there we go. God has personality and God has many attributes and characteristics as a part of that personality. How many? Infinite. An infinite number. Okay. So then, because of this infinite number, so about the circle there, it's a little wonky on the side, God has some principles. And when I say, if I said to you something like, do you have any principles? What does that imply to you? Do you have any principles? If Barbara, if we keep hand up, Barb, for our... Remember, not all your mic runners know who you are. Um, things that I live by and stand by. Yes, things that you live by and stand by. Things that actually are really a part of your very character and nature, are they not? Yeah. So when we say God's principles, we're actually talking about things that God lives by and stands by, things that are a very part, they really, can you see, are created from God's personality, God's infinite character. Does that make sense? That's where they come from. So these principles are not arbitrary, sort of imaginary things that existed outside of God. They are a part of God's very nature. And they exist because God exists. So you can see straight away that if we could understand God's principles, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Because then we got start to understand God's personality. Right? So this is where, where we need to understand about the personality. And then what we need to see is we'll go just skip. I'll come back to this diagram. I'm drawing it on the board anyway. I just I can't easily skip it without going to a mouse. There we go. So now we have God's principles. Now these principles form a framework for what comes underneath. Because God lives by them, 
Everything is done in harmony with these principles. Just like if you had principles of your own, you would do everything in harmony with it. Does that make sense? So God too does everything in harmony with these principles because they are an expression of God's personality. So here we have God's principles. Now, God's principles form a framework for the next layer, the law layer, which is all God's laws, and it's the principles that form a framework for the laws. No law would exist or can exist without having every principle operate upon it. And that is from the very smallest law governing the very smallest particle, which would be how small? Infinitely small. Right? Right the way through to everything in the universe that fits within God being the infinite being. It's like a framework. So the principles form this framework for law. They govern what the law does. And when we say the law, we're talking about billions and billions and billions. How many laws? <laughs> uh, an infinite amount of laws. Does that make sense? Potentially, there's an infinite amount of laws. In fact, in your own body, um, from, from memory, there's 10 followed by 37 <laughs> zeros amount of laws that govern your body, just your physical body. That's quite a lot of laws, right? So that's billions of 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 billions, of billions <laughs> going on for this nine of these at this time so said nine uh, sorry said said at least what four four nines so 36 isn't it so said at least four times right okay now each law governed by the principles automatically achieves the res the objectives of the principles so any law that's being created automatically uh, achieves the principles. That automatically fits into the principles. Automatically does what the principles dictate it to do. Now, as you can imagine, there are a, as we've said, there are a, how many principles again? Infinite, Infinite yes. So, so we are only going to discuss 16. <laughs> mm. Can you see that's a bit of a problem before we begin, right? <laughs> so isn't that incredible? We're going to spend 34 hours skimming. Well, we're not even scratching the surface. We're probably just polishing up the surface a little bit, uh, discussing 16 principles. But, but there are obviously, being God being an infinite being, there's potentially an infinite number of principles as well. But we can group them up a bit um, to make it easier for us to understand. And what we're going to do is group them into classes or... And let's have a look. Sorry, it's uh, the classes that we're going to group them up into. The foundation principles, which is this session for this day and tomorrow. We're going to discuss eight of them. Love, truth, life, development, economy, function, permanence and scope. So there's the eight that we'll be doing in the first group. The second part of the group, the second session, will be hierarchy, governance, responsibility and conversation. And the third group, we're going to focus on the principles that are the primary principles that govern what happens to your life, which you could call the soul-specific principles, and that's will, desire, redemption and transformation. 16. But, you know, with these 16 principles you can get a very good grasp about what God's personality and nature is. And you can get a very good grasp about so many other things in the universe. In fact, as we've pointed out, every single law of which there are an infinite amount is governed by every one of these principles. So that in each law there is these principles in, exists within each law. Can you see that this also makes it interesting because we can start to examine the principle rather than attempting to examine the billions and billions and billions of the 
infinite number of laws, we can start to examine some principles that are injected into each law. And this, this actually means for us that if we start to obey the principles, we are automatically obeying billions of laws. And if we disobey the principles, we are automatically disobeying every law. So this gives us a bit of a, a, like a shortcut, can you see? Into understanding how to live in harmony with God's universe. We can start to live in harmony with the principles and that is what's going to help us live in harmony with all of God's uni universal systems. Peter, you'd like to ask if we have the mic down there? Please? So with every single law, nothing's working in isolation. It's impossible. They all expand upon what's already existing. Yes, every single law, even down to the law that covers the very smallest, infinitesimally small particle, um, is actually, is actually com has all the principles combined and, and injected into the law that governs that particle. And that applies from the smallest particle to the greatest of God's creation, which is actually you, believe it or not. Not your body, not your spirit body, they are separate creations. I'm talking about your soul. That's the biggest creation of God. It is bigger in its potential than even this physical universe and everything it contains. And we'll talk about why that's the case right? later when we talk about transformation principles and so forth. So isn't that incredible? We're basically saying there that every single principle is injected into every single creature and every single law that governs every single creature. And the highest of those creatures being your soul, which of which you are one half, right? Actually exists outside of the physical universes that exist that contain your bodies your spiritual and your physical body. We'll talk about how that is possible later. All right. So they are the principles we're going to discuss. Make sense? Alex, thanks. Hi, just what you said before about um, if you're obeying the principles, then you're obeying all the laws automatically. Does that explain like when you're really resistive, it's like everything's against you, like... All of God's laws, everything's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, your computer God's slows down, your blender's not working. <laughs> God's trying to make it difficult. Yeah. For you to break the law. <laughs> see, most of us think you know, we've got to compare human laws with God's laws. You can see that, can't you? Just from this one discussion about God and God's principles, <laughs> straight away you can see why we've got to have many of the discussions we're going to have in the actual presentations we give you this week. Because it, the, the reality is that God is automatically trying to destroy everything you create that's out of harmony with any one of God's principles. Interesting concept, actually, if you think about it. Can, can you see that it's almost pointless making anything that's out of harmony with God's principles? Isn't it pointless, really? <laughs> God's automatically trying to destroy it from the moment you're creating it. Uh, he's even destroying it the moment you had the thought to create it. <laughs> he's trying to destroy that thought, even. Very interesting. Now, one of the things I haven't covered uh, yet is about the personality. So I just want to skip back to the personality for a moment because there's two factors that I think we need to understand as well with regard to how God communicates. There's two methods of communication that God uses that God can actually measure and the laws themselves actually measure these things. So if you have a thought, what is a thought? It's a specific type of energy that, crea that creates connections in your spirit body. At this point is where most of your thoughts are coming from. And I say for most of you that's the case because you're detuned from your soul. So it's your spirit body that's creating a lot of your thoughts. And 
And those thoughts are really just energetic systems, are they not? Right? Well, God's laws measure flow of energy. So God's laws can actually measure your thought. And, they, and God's laws do measure your thoughts. What's emotion? Emotion is an energy in motion, isn't it? Some type of energy. What type? It could be anger or it could be love or it could be sadness or fear or it could be joy, happiness. Whatever the energy is in motion, well, since it's an energy in motion, God has the ability to measure energy, the flow of energy. Therefore, every single law measures the flow of emotion. Many of you have not understood the significance of that yet. Because you're not seeing that every single thought, every single feeling you have is actually measured by the law. You think that many of the things you think and even feel you can get away with, but you can't. The law measures them. And the reason why the law measures them is because a part of God's nature is emotion itself. And in fact, emotion, which is just really energy in motion, of which thought is a type of energy emotion, belief is a type of energy emotion, uh, emotional feelings like that we describe as joy and happiness and sadness and fear and all those things, they are just energies in motion. They are specific types of energy that actually have mathematical formulas that define them. So God can measure every single thought, feeling, attitude, belief that is occurring inside of the human soul at any single point in time. He can ever even measure the intention, which is another set of types of emotions, which are desires. He can measure those too. So emotion is the way God communicates with the rest of God's universe. That's one way. The second way God communicates is what I have already spoken about, and this is through mathematics. Since every energy can be mathematically defined, can you see that God communicates with all of God's universe through mathematics? Now, can you see how amazing this is? But it's also quite weird in a way, isn't it? Because what are humans mostly closed down to? <laughs> Emotions and mass. masses for most, for most humans, right? Emotions and mass. Amazing, huh? The very two things God uses to primarily communicate with all of God's universe. And what do we do? We try to ignore both of them. Because, because we have to, to maintain the illusion we exist outside of God. That's why we do it. It's a maintenance of the illusion. Okay, so we're now at these laws, right? We want to have a look at these laws. They are self-maintaining creations of God. In other words, God's principles create the laws, they govern the law. So the law itself is self-maintaining. It does its job automatically. God doesn't need to go... Uh, what's going on over there? Yep, I need to sort that out. No, what's going on over here? Imagine if God, if there were billions of creatures and billions of laws and you imagine the complexity of that job would be quite difficult. Right? But God's not done that because God has set all of these laws into automation. It's like making a program from a computer's perspective that does the same job over and over and over again, no matter what. Right? And that's what God has done with these laws, set them in automatic motion. So God doesn't need to be there go, like taking, making personal choices and decisions unless God wants to. Because the laws automatically do that for God. God created them through the principles. You follow? So they're driven by God's nature. This is the laws. They're driven by God's nature and desires. So you can see God's personality, which contains desires, formed the principles which govern the law. So therefore, the law itself is a reflection of God's desire and God's personality. Right. It's 
most of us are in rebellion against law, but we don't realize what we're in rebellion against, really. We're in rebellion against God's personality, God's nature. What, we're in rebellion against what God feels, in other words. They're powered by God's energy. And now God has an infinite amount of energy. And since everything is all based around energy and how energy combines even to form matter and so forth, since everything is measured mathematically through the flow of energy, can you see that it has to be powered by something? And it's powered by God's infinite amount of energy. Right. And this thing, these two things, the bottom two things are important too. The laws provide loving consequences when they're obeyed and they provide loving consequences when they're disobeyed. Most of us think, no, how's that? We go, no, they provide unloving consequences when we're disobeyed. No, and that's not true. It's loving consequences when they're obeyed. So now the laws exist. They provide a framework for the universe to exist. Now you'll learn, as I said down the track, you'll learn that actually it's not just one universe. There are multiple universes in hierarchy. But we'll just look at it as one thing at this stage because we, you know, in terms of our understanding it needs to grow as we see the new principles come into play. All right. So, we'll go to these facts in a minute, but I just want to refer you back to the diagram, which I'll just do now. Oops. That diagram. So now we have this diagram, which is basically what I've got now on the board. So you've got goes, attribute, character, desires and personality. You've got God's principles of law and God's laws within hierarchy. And then you've got God's creations within hierarchy. And we'll talk about hierarchy in three days' time. As to what that means. So there's our very basic diagram about God and the existence of the universe. Now you can imagine, because we are just touching the surface, <laughs> this must be just touching the surface of what we could discuss about these matters. Okay, so let's just jump back to where I was. Let's look at some fundamental facts about these laws. So now we're looking at this layer, the layer of laws that govern the universe itself. So potentially an infinite number of laws exist. Now that's, uh, that re does a lot of... Uh, you know, that, that creates a lot of interesting reflections if we think about it in terms of how do we go about understanding each law <laughs> given the fact that we're not infinite beings can you see that it's highly unlikely that we'll ever ever be able to understand every law highly unlikely so then how do we live in harmony with all the laws without understanding what they are well, obviously we can't. Until we get to an understanding of the law, we can't live in harmony with it. So that's an interesting thing in itself. So a detailed discussion of each of these infinite laws. Can you imagine? Like, I'm only introducing you to some very basic principles in this talk, which is just over half an hour now. And, and you can see straight away that actually if we started talking about one law, right, we'd probably be here for years as a minimum. Like just the law of gravity, if you wanted to understand the law of gravity properly, you would be here literally for years as a minimum because the law of gravity is combined through billions of other laws. Laws governing individual matter, law, uh, the coagulation of matter, how matter forms mass, what the mass, the attractions in the matter, and the different types of attractions. There's electrical, magnetic, and other types of strong attractors in the matter. And then there's a the gravitational field of the matter. And you'd have to understand all that before you can actually understand gravity, really. So you could, you could spend your whole life on Earth understanding gravity to the proper degree that we would want to discover it, obviously. 
So can you see that that's one, one, what we feel is one law, which is actually not. It's actually quite a few number of billions of laws combined into one law. That's really what it is. But, but we'd spend all this time trying to discover that one law, and that's one law, and there's an infinite number of them. <laughs> How long are we going to spend uh, discussing law? Obviously, can you see discussing law might form a fair bit of your future, actually. Can you see that? Yeah. And it has formed a fair slice of my and Mary's time over the last 2,000 years. So we'll be in a process of eternal discovery of God's laws. We, we can't expect to instantly understand them all, obviously. But there has to be a way, um, you know, because, because our understanding is very rudimentary and limited, there has to be a way, doesn't there, to be able to live in harmony with most of them without understanding them. And that's what we're going to present to you through this group. Right, so that's one fact. Next fact. New laws are created at every moment. When you read that, how did you feel? <laughs> Barbara, you like to ask a question about it. Can you see that's a pretty challenging concept, isn't it, if I'm going to really think about it? Yeah, I went, wow, I can't believe that. Um, so my question on that was, um, so you're saying that new laws have been created. Um, is that that God has created the potential for them and our changing in condition, good or bad, then um, um, triggers it into reality? Yes. Or is God creating new laws all the time? Well, the first thing is very true. What you said at first is very true, but the second thing is also true. <laughs> so, so, but, but God ha has allowed for God's creations to commingle. To, to, and as they commingle, they join together, they actually create new substances and therefore new laws that govern those substances. And that happens right from the smallest to infinitesimally small substance right the way through to what goes on with the human soul. So, so the reality is you can see there must be billions of laws being created at every moment. And there are, literally. Right. Now, that being the case... Can you see if we started discussing one law, we're already behind the eight ball, as the saying goes. We're already behind because in the time we're spending discussing one law, there's a few billion other laws just getting created. Can you see that we just get further and further and further behind in understanding them? So obviously, if we discussed individual laws with you, that would be a pretty pointless exercise, really, in this group, wouldn't it? Can you see that? So, so many of you, when you came to this group, you're probably thinking, well, before you saw the outlines, you're probably thinking, yeah, I'll, I'll find out about these different laws. You know, the law of attraction, law of cause and effect, the law that governs the you know, tra transformational process and all those kind of things. We'll discuss them in a lot more detail. How can I? I can't. By the time I've finished saying one word, there's probably a few million laws just getting created. And then, you, th then what we're going to talk about then, all of those two? It's just like, as you can see, you're just going to get more and more behind. In the process, so there has to be ways to actually to actually circumvent this pro problem of discussing each individual law, doesn't there? God must have designed the way, and that's the irony that the more we discuss it, the farther behind we get. Yeah, we go to Eva. Thank you. So it should be also be exponential, I suppose, that the amount of laws kind of grows faster and faster in amount. Potentially that can happen, doesn't it? Because the more and more matter that gets created, there must be also then the creation of the laws that govern that matter. And then if that process exponentially grows, then obviously the creation of laws potentially can exponentially grow as well. Yep. Yeah, so, so that it's very complicated, huh? Okay. So... Understanding God's principles and laws requires understanding God's character, nature and personality. So that's an interesting thought. The, see, everything comes from this personality imposed on the principles which God lives by and, and, and does everything by. And if that's the case, then can you see that uh, I'm going to have to somehow understand God's personality, but how do I do that? And, I, and I've suggested to you ways for the eight, last eight years of recordings that we have, which is to receive God's love, and then you'll start understanding God's personality. And many of you still don't get how important that is to your life. It's, it's, it's the, it should be the thing of first importance. 
because it, because without it, you're not going to really understand very much of this universe you're living in. You're not even going to understand yourself very well, in fact. So all the people in the spirit world who have not received God's love, they, they stop development at the sixth sphere. Now, at this stage, there's 36 spheres, and you're stopping your own development at sixth sphere. And remember, there's potentially an infinite number of spheres or universes even so can you see if you're limiting yourself to six the sixth sphere in the first universe <laughs> how much you're limiting your future life that's an extreme limitation of your potential so that, that seems to be a fairly pointless thing to do so it's far better if we can provide you know, and productive to discuss the governing principles than it is for us to discuss the laws themselves, obviously. Yeah, you can see that? If we can leave some of your questions until the Q&A on this, this will be good because I'm getting a bit behind with these facts. Understanding God's law requires following God's way. So, God's way is emotional and <laughs> mathematical, okay? Understanding God's laws, it says, following God's way is emotional and intellectual understanding of important fundamental details. But you can see that it involves emotions and mathematics. Now, can you see if I'm pretty close down to emotions and pretty close down to mathematics? I'm just <laughs> closed down. What do I do? I've got to start opening up to these things, don't I? If I want to really understand... God and understand God's laws and principles properly. So unless, and, and the irony is too that, that even the level of emotions I currently have, that I'm currently able to engage without God's assistance to grow my soul, in other words, without God's love entering my soul, without transformation of my soul occurring, I will be limited to a certain level of understanding of both the emotions and the mass involved. Now as a result of that, I have no future potential other than reaching a certain developmental potential in terms of my emotional state and my mathematical state because I need a part of God's feelings to enter me before I can actually begin to understand the mathematics, the science and the emotion behind how the universe actually exists. Hence the importance of dealing with your emotions that block that process, right? A very important thing. We need to understand that while I, my capacity remains at the, the capacity that I was created to be without God's assistance, so in other words, the capacity of the perfect natural man, as you would read in the Paget messages, while my capacity remains at that level, I have a limited emotional experience, a limited understanding, a limited thought process, a limited amount of mathematical understanding and a limited amount of logic. Therefore, unable to understand infinite growth. To grow infinitely and understand the infinite, you are going to have to receive some of the infinite. Very important thing to think about, that statement. God's laws are complex, intricate and mathematically defined. So you can imagine if we're talking about an infinite, potentially infinite amount of laws and how they are constructed, go right down from the smallest particle to the highest creation of God. You can see they must be incredibly complex. Incredibly complex. All right. Yeah, it's an interesting concept, isn't it, once we start examining the principle of infinity and how it actually applies to everything after that point. They can't be broken. God's laws can't be broken. To, in fact, to, to so-called break the law, pull it apart and break it, actually, you would have to break God, which is impossible. So... so you can't actually break the law. 
the law has consequences for living in harmony with it and consequences for living out of it, but you can't take away the operation of the law itself. You can't. It's impossible. The law will work every time, all the time, under the same requirements, under the same circumstances, under the same situation, because there are principles that enforce that to occur. So you can't break it. Any, any attempt to rebel is just a rebellion in your imagination. <laughs> That's all it is. Now we've spent 2,000 years, myself and Mary, have spent 2,000 years examining laws and the principles governing law. So obviously 34 hours is not going to do the job of trying to transfer that information to you, right? So all we can do is provide you with a very fundamental understanding and then hope that this information triggers your desire to investigate further. And remember, you were not going to be able to investigate without the relationship with God, in fact. Right? Now there are many, many six fear spirits, many people in the perfect natural man condition who are trying to find out more and more about law, but they can't. Because you need a part of the infinite to understand the infinite. And so, so they are going to be consigned to the limited understanding, suppositional understanding, assumptions that they will have to make, which will sometimes be true and sometimes be false. Now, if you want to live that kind of life, which I don't recommend because that means that you don't know when you're breaking law and you don't know when you're living in harmony with law. If you want to live that kind of life, then that's your choice. God allows you to make this choice, but it's not the best choice you can make. So we're going to provide some examples in the program, you'll see, but they're not the examples I'd prefer to provide to you, because the examples I'd prefer to provide are highly complex examples, but at this stage the majority of you don't have the emotional or mathematical ability to understand some, even some of the rudimentary things about how these laws combine. So what we're going to do is try to come up with some very basic Understandings. Does that make sense? Of, and, and examples. Some examples that you can relate to in your day to day life. But understand they're not the most complex of the examples we could provide, but by a long shot, obviously. Right? So, this is a very important thing to remember as well. Now, one thing we wanted to also mention is our spirit friends wanted to say a few things to you. So, what I'll do is I'll read out their comments here to you. You've got them in your notes as well. The audience must be aware of attempts to intellectualize and categorize law. So if there are a infinite number of principles governing law and therefore an infinite number of laws, can you see that categorizing law is, like, is really just something to do to help your understanding? Don't think that now there's a whole lot of rules about these categories, because there's not. These categories have just been our creations, myself and Mary's creations, to help you understand some basic principles. Does that make sense? Don't think that God puts, has made these categories. God's not up there going, yes, I'll fit this law into the fundamental, the foundation category. And I'll fit this law into the order category. You know, God's not doing that. Right? God doesn't even communicate that way. God communicates, so God doesn't communicate in English. God communicates with emotion and mathematics. So, you know, God's not defining these principles in some kind of English terminology or any other language that we have on earth for that matter. The sum total of law is infinitely greater than the parts Jesus will be able to explain to you in the time he has available. Can you see why that's true now? Of course that's true, right? If you've got an infinite God with an infinite personality and potentially an infinite number of principles, therefore an infinite number of laws, it's impossible for us to <laughs> explain an infinite number of things in a finite amount of time. So, They've also said God's laws have intricate workings. Can you see why? We'll start to see why through the group actually. And it cannot be assumed that the small amount of principles Jesus shares with you for the purpose of beginning your awakening to the understanding of God's loving laws are a complete discussion or even anything more than a brief <laughs> caress 
of the subject. <laughs> All right. God's design of law is far too complex to explain to the audience in their current condition. So even after our 34-hour program, many of you will find you're still struggling to understand some of the basic concepts and principles. As they grow towards God, far more will become clear and more truth will be understood. Jesus has created this group to hopefully inspire you on the path of discovery of God's laws and to demonstrate to you the wealth of truth that God has available to those who seek it. So that's what we would like for you to contemplate as well. You can see why what they've said is true after our small previous discussion about God's nature and God's principles and laws that govern the universe. But you can see that it must be far more complicated than we're ever going to be able to discuss with you or even caress the subject for you in this period of time that we have. Yep. So there's our diagram. A diagram you're going to see a few more times in our presentations. It's a diagram that is very basic at this stage and it will gra gradually become a bit more complicated and complex as time goes on until the last day it will start to resemble a bit more like it really resembles in, the, in a universal structure. But it can form the basics or the basis of your fundamental understanding of what we're going to discuss next. So, the principles to be discussed, the definition, objectives, application of what the principles reveal about God and some examples are all in your outlines. However, we're not going to discuss them. <laughs> we're only going to get to discuss a summary of that and a few of the examples, considering that we could possibly find an infinite amount of examples, you see that's quite a limited discussion. But hopefully the examples we've chosen will help you understand. Now with the examples there's also something we've tried to do and that is we've used gravity and aerodynamics, two laws that I've discussed with you before, right? As, and carried them through with each principle to see, for, to help you see how each principle applies to those laws. Right? But obviously, they are some of the most simple of laws, even though they are have billions of components, um, compared to some of the other discussions we're going to have to have about law itself. So each discussion is a very basic presentation on the subject. We're going to try to introduce some factual truth to you, provide an explanation. That's as far as we can go, really. We don't have time to do anything else, really, in this group. Uh, now, this being the case, can you see that some of the explanations have to involve emotions and mass? Can you see that? Some of them have to involve these things. So it'll be very rudimentary, and so it won't be too complicated, won't, won't, won't be anything further than the, what most 10-year-old persons could actually cope with. Right? And I'm not suggesting you're all at that level <laughs> with your emotions or your mass, although with your emotions I'd suggest that most of you are. But with your mass, you know, obviously some of you have a greater education about that with mass. But we thought if we take that as the entry point, because then a child can understand these principles as, as well as all adults. And this means that a child has the opportunity of living in harmony with them, just, just like the adults do. So that's what we've chosen to do with this talk. So what we'd like you to do is to let yourself feel your emotions, let yourself feel all, all of your blocks to mass and all these other things that you have, and, is, and, and not close down, but open up, you know, engage it with some enthusiasm. You've got plenty of opportunity to write down questions, so write down the questions. Think of, there's plenty of time outside of these groups. We only have six or seven hours contact each day, and some days less than that. You've got plenty of time to think about things, write down questions and thoughts that you have about things, and we'd like you to spend that time and engage that process so that, so that you can come here enthusiastic and engage the homework as well with that same enthusiasm. 
That's what we'd like you to do. So remember, God, the infinite entity, has an infinite number of personality, traits, principles, attributes, has an infinite, potentially an infinite number of principles that govern law and that govern the universe. And we, as humanity, can choose to know or choose to ignore as we may. But can you see that it's probably wise to choose to know? Yeah. So that's what we're going to do is give you an opportunity to know some of it over the coming week. All right, so we'll break now. And if we could come back at about uh, 11.30 for a break. Can I just stop those who've already got up? I haven't finished talking. Another act of unloving behaviour. Most of you would have got up while I was talking, if you think about it. Interesting. I had to correct that in the previous group as well. Can you see why you're engaging this unloving behaviour? Fear of not getting back on time. Fear of not being able to go to the loo and get back in the time required. There's different things. Can you see straight away your fear motivates you into an unloving act? Can you see that? Can we stop having fear motivating you <laughs> in this group? And instead you'd be driven by love and what love would determine? Can we do that? Thanks. Now I'm finished. <laughs> Thanks, guys.